anyway. So, firstly, can I thank you all for coming here um, this evening? And while we're all here to celebrate, in particular, this one great map that basically kick-started modern geology as a creditable science, William Smith's 1815 map of England, Wales, and part of Scotland, it's 200 years to the day for the date of its official publication. But we're also celebrating, I think, the efforts of many geologists who since then have toiled away through the cold, the rain, the snow, the wind, the <laughs> humidity, <laughs> and the occasional heat to document the geology of this country in glorious technicolor splendor, the creators of geological maps. Now, while you know, it is recognized that Smith's map played a pivotal role in geology, there were others at the time who were also producing different types of geological maps. There were actually attempts in France in the 1760s and 1770s, of which we've got copies in the, in the library here. It's sort of a very different way of doing it, but people were trying to work out a way of um, demonstrating geology and putting it on some sort, sort of map. Um, but these aren't in the display, it was all too complicated, unfortunately. But there is another beautiful geological map of the Isle of Wight, which was produced by Thomas Webster in the same year as Smith's map, 1815, and it's in the case down there, in the middle case at the top. Um, and this particular map down there, so I don't want this to steal all the line, right? The, hint, the map down there is particularly important because it was the map that was owned by Henslow, um, and Henslow took it with him on a field trip to the Isle of Wight with Cedric, and it was one of Cedric's first geological field trips in 1819. So it was on that field trip that they actually came up with the idea of the Cambridge Philosophical Society, which is still going today. So this is just part of this amazing collection of geological maps that we have in the department, and we should never get to see the, the light of day normally. So we've got lots of these other ones on display. But we're particularly delighted that thanks to modern innovation, such as the, the company called Truview, who produced this amazing acrylic called Optium, with which this map is glazed. And this cuts out most of UV light, and so we hope we have the map on permanent display. That's the idea anyway. Um, alongside it, you can see the modern geological map of the UK, which we put up yesterday. And when you compare the two, I think it really shows how amazing Smith's efforts were essentially single-handedly um, developing his map. And there are a lot of close similarities between the two still. Now, this particular map was signed off quite literally by Smith and given the number A91 on January the 23rd, 1816. And his um, signature is actually up on the, the top right there, so when he was satisfied with it, he had signed it off. And it was hand-coloured, um, probably by a Mr. Morse, a colourist who was employed by the map maker John Carey, who Smith worked with for about four years in the production of these maps. And it was said by Smith's nephew, the geologist, ge geologist John Phillips, but each map took something like seven to eight days to be coloured. I'd like to thank uh, a number of people who've been involved in putting all this together. Um, I'd like to thank all the museum staff who in different ways have been involved, but I'd like to pick out some in particular, and especially Rob, where's Rob? My glasses are off. Rob, Rob Theodore over there. So Rob designed all this, he did all the construction, and he really pulled the whole thing together. So he's played this pivotal role in producing this display. Um, Douglas Palmer, who did the researching and the writing of the, the text. Um, Sarah Finney, our conservator, who helped with the conservation aspects of the map. Um, Sarah Hammond, who's been developing a bunch of William Smith's stash, that will soon appear in the shop, um, and also for organising this evening. And Sarah Humbert, there with the camera, <laughs> it's her fault that we're all here tonight. Because she brought this map to my attention. It's folded up, it's stuck away in a little box. And she said, why don't we put it on display? It ought to be on display. Well, okay, why not? So here we are. Um, I particularly like to thank the company Trueview for their amazingly kind donation of this acrylic, this huge piece of acrylic that covers this. And particularly to Jennifer Booth of Trueview who negotiated this and made that happen. Uh, I'd like to thank the Friends of the Central Museum who have provided great financial support towards the cost of conservation and, and restoration of the map. And many thanks in particular to Nicholas Burnett and his team at Museum Conservation Services in Duxford. They toiled away, turned the very sad, soiled, faded, virtually forgotten map into the splendid map that we see today. 
And a special thanks to Maria Martinez Picciano for the colour restoration on this. She's done a fantastic job. Um, also, thanks to Paul Flower and Jessica Falkertz and their team Honest Ideas who helped produce the, the leaflet, and I hope you've all got a copy of that. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank and introduce the foremost authority of William Smith, Professor Hugh Torrens, for coming here tonight to say a few words about Mr. Smith and his man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.